But as I understand at that age, you were being a little bit of a rebellious teenager. Sure. You were causing Absolutely. some problems at home and you and your father, mm -hmm. who has raised you by himself, mm -hmm. were butting heads. Mm -hmm. And at this time when he wanted you to go to Lake Placid for that program, mm -hmm. you didn't catch the plane on the day you were supposed to go there. I don't know if catching the plane is the right phrase. More like somebody threw me the ball and I dodged and went the other way. <laughs> I didn't even try to catch it. Why? You know, I was, uh, I was about 14 years old at the time. Um, my summers consisted of hanging out with my friends, going to barbecues, going to parties. I was hanging out with a much older group of people um, than normally I think a normal 14 year old would hang out with. The wrong crowd? I think definitely the wrong crowd. Um, they, you know, uh, and some of them are still my friends today, um, but they were not going in the same path that I think that my life was, you know, that I had, set, that someone had set forth in front of me. And, uh, you know, my dad and I told my dad, I don't want to go to New York. I don't want to go train there. It's on the other side of the country. I want to stay here. I want to grow up here. I want to be with my friends. It was a little bit scary to me to, to go all across, you know, across the United States and hang out with people that I don't even know. Nobody was really from the West Coast. Everybody was Midwest or East Coast. So it was different. It was a different lifestyle, different kids, different environment. And I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I didn't know anything about the training. Um, all I knew was I was going to not be able to hang out with my friends here. I wasn't going to enjoy myself. And I didn't have the passion for skating yet that I do now. So my dad basically said, look, you're going to go because you have this opportunity and they're, gonna, they're giving you this opportunity to go to an Olympic training center in upstate New York and you can train with a good coach with kids who have talents just like you. And he dropped me off at the airport and he says, okay, good luck. And I was like, okay, dad, see you later, good luck. I walked right over the payphone, right over to the payphone, pick up the payphone and said, hey, you know, I called my friend. I said, hey, I'm at the airport. Um, can you come get me? Really, 15, 20 minutes later, I was back on the road. Um, my dad thought I was still actually in New York. And for the next, I think, one week or two weeks, you know, he hadn't really heard from me. I think the first week he didn't hear from me, and he's like, this is kind of funny. And I remember, he, I think he got a call from the coach in New York saying, uh, Mr. Rono, yeah, uh, we're just wondering when you're gonna send Apollo out here and if you guys were still gonna accept the invitation. And my dad's like, well, what are you talking about? He's been out there for a week already. How's he doing? You know, <laughs> so <clears throat> the coach is like, you know, he's he never he never got off the plane. I mean, looks like he never boarded the plane. So my dad found out that you know I obviously wasn't in New York and found out whose house I was staying at. Um, and then we spent the next you know couple weeks butting heads more and more and more. And uh, it wasn't pretty, you know. I mean, I was so defiant, you know, as a person and my character. You know, I have a very strong character. And when I was younger. I thought I was always right. That's just how I'm always right. The other guy's wrong, especially when it came to my dad. You know, he would say he would say red, I would say blue. Just like that. Just because even if he was right, I would say he wasn't right. You know, I think a lot, a lot, a lot I think a lot of kids are like that. Um, yes, I have a son. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, my dad says, "Okay, Apollo, you're going to go." And of course, I'm like, nope, 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 I'm not going to go. I don't, I don't want to go. I want no part of this. So he drives me to the airport again. And instead of saying good luck, he goes through security with me, gets on the plane <laughs> with me. We both fly there. We both get off the airplane, and we both drive to you know, this area in New York. And uh, he, he sees the coach, and he says, well, here's Apollo. Good luck. Almost as if, almost as if saying... I give you about two weeks, buddy, before this kid's in order to be found. <laughs> you know? And uh, at, the, at the time, the coach was like, whoa, this is good luck. What did he, you know, like, he didn't know how to take that in my dad's expression. What am I getting here? What am I getting into here? You know? What did I do here? And uh, I actually it took me about, about a month to really warm up to the coach. Um, and then I kind of just started to settle in. And I started to kind of actually like what I was doing out there. And... Uh, was, was being taught discipline, was being taught uh, sacrifice for my sport, uh, the training, and um, 
it was, a, it was an interesting time in my life. At such a young age, too, you know, it's kind of interesting how I look back and I say, wow, I, w I went through quite a bit at the age of 14, 15 years old.